of waters. Oh yeah. Put your hand in the other man.
Good morning. We want to ask everyone to come on in, uh, find a seat as we begin our worship service for this Sunday morning. We want to thank God for those who have traveled near and far to be here. And we also thank you for those who are viewing on our live stream. We also want to thank God for those who have been away that are, are back with us. Amen. Good to see y'all. Amen. 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 Super Bowl over with. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I did not tell y'all the Chiefs was going to win. Didn't I tell you? Anyway. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> that's what that's in the past. <laughs> Amen. We can talk about this after service. <laughs> Amen. All right. The Bible teaches us in John 4 and verse 24 that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So that means if we sin or fall short, we have an opportunity to make that right or statement on our heart before we enter the worship service so that our worship won't be in vain. So do we have any among us at this time. Okay, seeing there none, the worship service will just now begin. The church say amen. amen. Join me in the singing of I love my Savior too. I know you do, right? Amen. I love my Savior too. Jesus, my heavenly King, loves me, I know. Who raises to Him, my saint, onward I go. Closely to Him, my clean blessing still flow. And I love my Savior too. Oh, I, I love Desire. 
This is, this is an interesting time of our lives. And I say interesting because previously, in years past, before the pandemic, we would be tied into our songbooks or maybe just trying to go off of memory or trying to go to some old spiritual songs and now we sort of get tied into some of these digital follow-throughs. But oftentimes we still have to rely on what we know about our service to God. We're well, marching to Zion is one of those songs as we march through life. Think about God. Can we that love the Lord and let our joy be known? Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord and thus surround and thus surround the throne. Oh, 
taken from Luke 8 chapter 43 verses Luke 8 43 through 44 once again that is Luke 8 43 through 44 now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who has spent all her livelihood on physicians and cannot be healed by any came from behind and touched the border of his garment and immediately her flow of blood stopped I've just read to you Luke 8, 43 and 44, and let us all stand and be led in prayer. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for letting us rise and shine for you, dear Lord. We thank you for our fine minister, Brother Brackens, who's about to come forth to deliver us a message. We thank you, dear Lord, for delivering me. For coming out the hospital, dear Lord, yes. safe and sound. Yes, yes. Dear Lord, we thank you for Sister Thompson for coming home safe and sound, dear Lord. Yes. Be with us all, dear Lord. Wherever we're struggling through our sickness and health, dear Lord, just be with us, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we ask you to watch over the sick and the breathe and the poverty stricken throughout this land and country. Yes. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Church, say amen again. Amen. I, I, didn't, I didn't give to uh, the folks in the audio room the next song because it just popped up in my head. I, 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 didn't, I didn't write it down and I didn't text it to them. But I believe you can get it. Our God, he's alive. Yes, sir. That, that'll work, won't it? There is beyond the azure blue a God concealed from human sight. He tinted skies with heavenly hue and framed the world with his great might. There is a God, he is alive.
He alive in your soul and in your spirit. Come on now. If you got up this morning, yes. and rose above your bedsides and set your feet on the ground and blood began to flow through your arteries and move slowly as you move to the bathroom and to the kitchen and all those other places that you went to in your house because of the goodness of God, yes. the love of God. Yes, sir the blessings of God, the grace of God, and nothing that we have done within ourselves. But it's a grace to be in the household of faith, to be able to come to the household of faith and worship him in spirit and in truth, because he is our God, and he is alive and active. He's an active agent in our lives. Yeah. He's moving things. He's yeah. shifting things. Yeah. Don't let the devil steal you. Come on now. He'll make you think God is somewhere off not paying no attention, but he's right there yeah. moving mountains for you and working things out and placing people and doing things because he is our God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We thank all of our brethren this morning who have uh, blessed us uh, through our devotion.
the prayers, the, the scripture reading, uh, the Bible class, the singing. Brother McGee done a phenomenal job on this morning, and we appreciate him. If you all don't mind, I just want to talk about Jesus. Yes, sir. That's all right, preacher. I don't, I, I don't know anything save Jesus. That's all right. Isn't that what Paul said? That's right. That's all I know. Save Jesus. Everything else is, is vain. And so I'll read the text for emphasis sake. I'll read a few extra verses. Uh, Brother Aaron did a phenomenal job. Uh, Luke 8 and 43, and the Bible tells us, and the woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood stanched. I'm reading from the King James Version. <clears throat> and Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee. And sayest thou who touched me? In other words, it's a whole lot of folk around you. Come on now, I'm all you. This text is rich. Yes. Yes. See, there were a whole lot of folk grabbing hold of Jesus oh, that he recognized. Come on now. Yes, sir. It was something about her. Uh -huh. Jesus said, somebody have touched me. Uh -huh. For I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. Well. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling, falling down before him. Unworthy, y'all. Oh, Unworthy. Come trembling. The fear of God. None of us is worthy. She felt unworthy, unclean, unworthless. Yet she got to falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she touched him and how she had been healed immediately. My, my. Testimony time. Yes. Verse 28. And he said unto her, validation time. Yes. Daughter. See, if don't nobody accept you, if God says daughter Come on now. and son, don't worry about no post. That's right. That's right. That's right. No like. That's right. I want to help somebody here today. He said, bought her. He validated her. He said, be of good comfort. Thy faith have made you whole. This is what we get here in this text, church. Y'all with me here this morning? Woman who was solely moved by, by faith, with all odds, completely against her. She found her way through the unknown. In spite of everything that was possibly against her, when she saw Jesus, she saw some light at the end of the tunnel. And there's a whole lot of people clinging to and touching Jesus. But what are the ingredients of the different touches? She's exhausted. Desperation. You've blown it and have no place to turn. The one constant in the equation is Jesus Christ. His love is unconditional. I don't care how low you go, how sick you become, how distant you feel. We're told he's right near every one of us. Hebrew writer puts it like this. Now, faith yes. is the substance. Right. See, you got to move in faith. On, See, everybody want to look for a sign. We want to look for God to move something and blow something up in our faith. No, he says faith. Talk to us, preacher. The unseen uh -huh. is what moves you 
to seek Jesus. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. To really perceive the power of God in your life, faith must be present. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so here in this text, we have this, this, this woman, this afflicted woman with an uncontrollable hemorrhage. Just to paint a picture for you, folks. She was unclean. Nobody touched her or anything she touched, she could touch. She was ostracized. She was cut off from society. Excommunicated from religious observances. If she was married, she was to be divorced. The fact that this woman's uncleanness had sunk deeply into her mind. She had been cut off from society and family and left alone for 12 years. 12 long years. She had gone to every doctor she knew or had ever heard about and not one of them was able to help her. She was now poor. She had then spent all her money. Exhausted all of her resources and still couldn't find a cure. She had daily experienced the pit of loneliness, unacceptance, and low self-esteem. She was nothing even in her own eyes. Therefore, in approaching Jesus, she felt embarrassed and unworthy. Her hemorrhaging was a, was a personal and intimate matter. Sometimes folks deal with some personal the walls of our suits and our makeup and our colorful looks and different things. But there's some stuff going on. She was considered unclean. However, she had exactly what she needed to receive help from God. A desperation and belief in Jesus Christ. We can picture her wondering, what am I to do? Well, he will not get to me. Nah. I'm unclean. My, my. But all of a sudden, she knew if I could only touch him, oh, if right. I could only get to the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. My, my, my. Just get to the hem. Listen, listen. First of all, the Bible tells us she was in this state for a long That's right. time. That's right, preacher. Having an issue of blood 12 years. Listen, if you've been in a condition, you could, listen, there's folks who have been in a condition for so long, yes. you just, you feel like you're just about beyond the point of return. Right. And at some point in time, you begin to accept this as a way of life. Right. This happens to people all the time, more right. often than not. That's right. We're more than likely to adjust to the condition. Uh -huh. This is just the way it is, and this is how I'm going to flow. Right. This woman. Yes. She suffered 12 years with a physical condition that was beyond her control. Right. She reached her limit in resources. Yes. And we're told she had this issue 12 years. No, sir. Listen, I don't know about you, but if I'm sick past three days, man, Lord have mercy. I'm going to the hospital, the doctor, and everywhere else. That's right. Under the law, she was considered ceremonial unclean. She had a social problem as well as a physical issue. Yes. You know how folks are. We live in a day and age. That's right. Number one, people thrive on acceptance. Number two, if you're sick, don't nobody want to be around you. You let somebody cough or sneeze in a public place. <laughs> Listen, if you've had COVID, they want to know, have you had your booster shots and everything else before you come around me? This woman church, she was at a crossroads. I'm talking about when you've reached your end wits. That's right. Mark's account in Mark 5, 26 read, and had suffered many things of many physicians and spent all that she had and did not get better. No. Mark says her condition grew worse. Yep. She spent all she had. There comes a time when you have exhausted all of your resources. Yeah, that's right. Now, now Luke's account, Luke is a physician. 
And so when you read Luke's account as a physician, he may be a little biased on this. But she went to doctor after doctor, and they couldn't do anything about it. And the purpose of this detail is not to give to the form of us as unfair doctor fees and practices. No. No, that's not the point here. The point is, listen, could nobody help her? Could nobody help her at all? Listen, sometimes you go to the doctor, one surgery lead to another, then another surgery lead to another, and you're still limping and hopping and skipping, and the only thing you have is doctor bills. Somebody know what I'm talking about, right? All of Jesus' miraculous healings of human disease point to one undeniable truth, and this truth plagues all of human history. For all, Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every human in history that reached the age of accountability has violated the will of God. Sin is, the, is man's greatest uncurable disease. The universality of sin, all of man's problems, physical, spiritual, can be traced all back to his sin problem. Problem is we treat the symptoms, not the disease. I don't care what you do to relieve the conscience. He has tried everything imaginable, remedy possible, only to find self works See, we try to fix ourselves by dealing with everything else. We got to deal with that sin in our life. When a soul is sick today, we often go to different doctors. And we spend a great deal of time and money and are never healed of them. A sick soul may go to the doctor of entertainment but find no cure. We may visit the doctor of success, but there's no help there in the long run. Some of us go to Dr. Pleasure. Dr. Self-Help or Dr. Religion can never bring a real cure. You need Dr. Jesus in your life. Dr. Jesus, the wise man said it. The wise man said it best, vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanity, all is vanity. It's Ecclesiastes 1 and 14. He said, I've seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of the spirit. No matter what I try to do to fill my appetite, I end up right back in the same position Amen. if I don't find Jesus. Are you with me, church? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Our sin problem keeps us in bondage. Paul cried out in Romans 7 and 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? We've wearied ourselves with every imaginable man-made device. We've wearied ourselves with religion when we really need a real connection. We really need to be in touch and tune with Christ. Come on now. Just like this woman we're reading of today. Healing was afar off, and we've tried everything. It seems like I take one step forward and fall back three. It's been a long time. I'm just, I'm just about out of gas. My, my, my. This woman was sick for a long time, but guess what she did? Come on. She pressed <laughs> forward. Didn't Paul say, I press toward the mark? That's right. Yeah. See, there's the press. She didn't let her condition become her reality. See, we're told, but as he went, the people thronged on him. Uh -huh. Mark's gospel account record, and Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged on him, Mark 5 and 24. Yes, yes. That word throng gives the idea of to press together, to press all around to the point of suffocation. They kept on pressing upon him almost to the point where he couldn't breathe. This is another reason why, you know, when folk on TV talking about miraculous gifts and healings, you know they are lying. Because if somebody could really heal, guess what? It's going to be televised. You're going to see it. You're going to miss it. It's going to... Folks, throng upon Jesus. Throng gives the idea of pressing together. They pressed all around him. 
But this woman, she didn't let that stop her. Even though getting to Jesus was not an easy thing, the condition of the woman made her ceremonially unclean. So technically, she couldn't even be around the general population, but she didn't care about none of that. That's right. This lady was at a low point, not just one day or two days or two weeks, but 12 years. Now, y'all know how you get. Sometimes you don't feel good for a few days, my, my, right? My. Imagine this woman, 12 years. We're not talking about a few days of not feeling good. She adjusted to a lifestyle of feeling this way. Your sickness don't have to be an issue with blood, but it could be anything that caused you not to function 100%. Amen. Amen. This woman, she didn't let that stop her. She didn't let that stop her. She kept going. She stayed consistent. Paul said, I sought the Lord thrice, three times about my thorn in the flesh. Listen, how many here got a thorn in the flesh? Something that you got to deal with on a daily basis that you can't shake, you can't bake. But it's there. God's response was, my grace is sufficient. See, when God says, no, I can do one or two, I can go one or two routes, church. I can take the victim road or I can take the victory route. See, the victim road leads to self-pity and will more than likely increase the pain, right? But the victory route accept the challenge and become more aware of the different tools to manage the issue the best way that I can. Yeah. See, I may not be able to stop the pain, but I can choose my approach. My focus is not on the area of influence as opposed to the areas of interest. See, I might be interested in stopping the pain, which I have nothing to do with, right? Pain medication, all of that stuff is a means to an end, because soon as that wear off, guess what? You hurting again. But I can adjust to how I deal with this thing. And we all got some issues, some things that we need to deal with, some things we have absolutely no control over whatsoever at all, but how you go about it by using the resources and tools, and blessings and graces that God has put before you is a different thing. That's right. Issue with blood. She's not just in the crowd. She's in the Palestinian sand on hands and feet, crawling on the ground. Remember, multitudes followed Jesus. Yes. Multitudes were seeking healing. She's being stepped on, spit on, you name it. No one is thinking about her. They got their own issues they're trying to get healed. They're looking for healing themselves from some sickness or disease. They thronged on him. Picture the hospital scene at the height of COVID times 10,000. I remember taking my daughter to the hospital when she broke her ankle. I honestly thought before, prior to, see, that's why some things you got to experience. Because I honestly was thinking, hey, man, this thing ain't real, what they talking about. You know, it's fake. But when I took her to that hospital, she broke her ankle at work. And when I went down there at Henry Ford Hospital on, on, on what's that, Boulevard or Green Boulevard, and saw them folks all lined in the aisleways, nurses and doctors and folks running all around the places. Bodies everywhere from the time you enter the emergence all the way through the hospital. I said, man, this thing is for real. See, some things you just don't know That's right. Yeah. until you see it for yourself. That's why you can never really judge a situation. So imagine Jesus coming through and you got all these sick folk thronging upon him. How hard it was her, for her to just get to him. The woman was persistent. She chose the victory route. She chose to stay the course. So many folk just quit. Just quit all the time. Look, I'm just so tired. You know, I'm, I'm so tired of them folk down there at North Broadway. They just quit. They inconsistent. They come when they feel like. This woman wasn't feeling good, but she was still crawling. Come on, now. 
She chose the victory route. See, this is Black History Month. That's right. right? That's right. And, and, and MLK said, if you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. And you can't walk, crawl. But guess what? Whatever you do, you got to keep going. Don't never stop. I don't care how tough it get, how hard it get. How many mountains you got to climb, you got to keep moving. And at some point, God will give you your breakthrough. Give you the, your breakthrough. That's why, listen, that's why, church, we can't judge nobody. See, when folk come into the church, I don't judge because you don't know what they had to go through to get here. You don't know absolutely what circumstances what challenges, what they had to fight, what they went through at work, what they went through with their kids, what they went through with their own health, what they went through at home, what they went through in their own marriage, what they, you just don't know. You have no idea what they had to go through just to crawl to get to the Lord. Just to get to the hem of his garment. If I can just get there. Sometimes all you got to do is just get there. I'm not talking about uh, a video. There's nothing like just getting there. Nothing like just getting there. Sometimes all you got to do is just get here. Things will change for you. This woman was persistent against all odds. Here's the thing, you got to make your way through the noise. See, she didn't let the circumstances around her stop her from getting to Jesus. She could have made all kind of excuses. It's too many people. I've been in this condition too long. The doctors can't help. I spent my money. None of those things hindered her. You got to make your way through the noise, church. All of the noise, the noise of disappointment, the noise of fear, the noise of family and friends that don't have your best interests, the noise of culture and the noise of society and social media, all of these things will block you out or attempt to block you out. I've never seen such an imbalance and influx of people that allow social media to dictate their emotions and livelihood. You feeling good one day and then the next day one post, you like a balloon. The noise, church. I thank God I don't listen to the noise. The noise. You got to work your way through the noise. If this woman would have paid attention to the people and circumstances around her, she never would have made it to Jesus. You got to work your way through the noise. Don't let no one distract you and stop the blessings that's before you. What you say, Doc? I'm going to get my blessings. I got to go get mine. I don't care how many who. And this woman, she's at the very bottom of the social scale. She refused to stop with all odds against her. She was defiled, destitute, and discouraged, but she didn't give up. Christ not only practiced it, but he taught this and commanded it. Amen. See, we're wrestling with some stuff. And God has, he said, listen, you got to move in faith. Matthew 7, 7, he says, ask. Yes. And it shall be given you. Right. Seek. Yes. You shall find not. And it's going to be open. You know, if he's not going to get rid of the pain, he's going to show you how to deal with it. All you got to do is just ask. Me and, me and my wife last weekend, we were trying to get some Chicago pizza last week. And man, they, they so tight on, on, on parking. Boy, they tried to get my truck. And my wife said, that tow truck out there. 
I went out there, I told him, I said, man, you rode past all these cars, but you seen this black truck out here. And you gonna get it. He said, well, he pointed at that sign and so say don't park there either. He said, don't matter, look at that right there, in other words. But we couldn't find nowhere to park, man, just to get a slice of pizza. And I saw a lady, she was pulling out, and I said, ma'am, where's a parking space? You know, we just want to go over there and get a slice of pizza. She said, you know what, here, I'm going to bless you with a pass. Oh, See, ask! That's right. That's right. Ask! <laughs> you don't know what you can get unless you ask God and talk to God and seek God. You want that job? Just ask. That's right. Just ask. You are a child of God. Don't be so inconsistent. Ask and keep on asking until you get some clarity. This woman was not afraid to go after what she knew and felt that Jesus could do, which could supply her with the strength for another day. One touch. Take note in the text. When you go back up and you read the text, you have Jairus seeking Jesus for his daughter's life. Yes, sir. The two people involved in these two healings could not be more different. Wow. Jesus is en route to Jairus' house, help us, help us. pressing through the crowd. Uh -huh. Huh? We, we're using homiletics now, Talk hermeneutics. Okay? Understanding the text. This woman stops Jesus in rout. Jairus uh -huh. is a man of substance, rich. Yeah. He's socially powerful. Yeah. He was religiously prominent in the synagogue. Yeah. He decided who could preach. He decided who would read the scriptures. He decided who would sing the song. Stop. This woman, on the other hand, was at the bottom of the barrel. She suffered an issue of blood, and she was not even allowed to set foot in the synagogue. Help us, Ceremonially unclean, she was at the other end of the social and religious spectrum. Two different people from two different worlds. But guess what? We all need Jesus. Amen. 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 What's my point? Jesus availed himself to all men. To all men. Yeah. And this woman interjected Jesus en route to Jairus' house, pressing through the large crowd. Sometimes you got to work your way through the crowd. Yeah. Women with the issue of blood. And see her way now. Just paint the picture in your mind, fighting her way. Wrestling through the crowd. And Jairus, right, he is a man of influence. He is a religious High stepper. And so that means he got some folks with him. Right. And guess what? They making room for Jesus to get to Jairus' house because Jairus is important. Amen. Amen. But this woman was important to Jesus. Amen. And she's on the ground and she's crawling and she's wrestling her way and it's in her mind. I can just get one touch. I don't care who else is around her. Just one touch. Stop. We're told she came behind him and touched the border of his garment or the fringe of his cloak. This refers to what the Hebrews would call a talia. This was a prayer shawl worn by rabbinical teachers in the fulfillment of the law. Jewish men wore long tassels. Stop. Jesus talked about them in one text. He says, y'all wearing these phylacteries to be seen of men because they want to set themselves apart. Oh, and so some scholars think that in her mind, by her grabbing the hem or the very bottom of the tassel, she's superstitious. My, my. You know how we think. Oh, yeah. If your hand itch, you got some money coming. <laughs> no, nah, that check was on the way in the mail anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Stop being so superstitious. Right? No. However it is, it was this woman's faith. This woman chose to touch this part of the garment. 
Anyway, whether it was her faith or superstition, but we do know faith was involved because Jesus validated it. And this is where, when we read Mark's gospel account, he paints a slightly different picture. In Mark 5 and 27, the Bible says, when she heard of Jesus, Come on now. she heard. Yes. You see, faith comes by hearing. She moved on what she heard. She came behind and touched. Touched. Now, watch this. Let's go a little bit deeper. That word touched, it's not just a mere, but it comes from a Greek term. It means to clean, to adhere, to fasten oneself to. She grabbed him, man. She wouldn't let him go. She didn't just touch Jesus, but she grabbed hold of him. She embraced him. Brother McGee talked about it this morning during our Bible class. Yes, sir, the yes. day of the Lord is about judgment and rescue. Come on now. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. She saw Jesus as somebody that could rescue her. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're not talking about a merely encounter with Jesus. We're talking about changing, life-changing moments. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just think about how many people encounter Jesus to no effect. Come on. A young rich ruler had an encounter with Jesus. Mm -hmm. and walked away worse off. Mark 10 and 22. And he was sad. And that saying, and he went away grieved. For he had great possessions. And Jesus walked up to this man and said, follow me. Come on, preacher. And his life was worse off. He walked away in misery. In misery. My, my. A mere encounter with Jesus is useless. Talk to us. It's about embracing his person. Yes. Who he is and yes. his ability to change the course of our lives. Yes. And how many are guilty of just an encounter with Jesus on Sunday morning? Talk to, us. to no change, to no power, no real connection. Many fall out of follow Jesus out of curiosity and my, my. drive to no real benefit from him. Help us, help us. Not this woman. She found him and she grabbed hold mm -hmm. of Jesus. Out of a deep sense of need and out of his power to alter the course of her life. Now. We see the same thing going on in the world of religion today. Yes, sir. Multitudes go to places of worship on Sunday morning. Thousands participate and commune at the Lord's table. Talk. And leave just as miserable as they can. My, my. How many really grab hold of the life-changing power of the Savior? Come on, I'm not talking about fashion, customs, habits, the love of excitement, or the itching ears. How many really go home at peace knowing they have embraced and have been embraced by the maker? Talk, you need something to grab hold of. Because when the excitement is gone, guess what? Talk. On Monday morning. Talk. Oh, yeah, when you get up Monday morning and you have to face the reality of your life storms, you're going to need some meat in your belly. You're going to need some love in your life. You're going to need some grace to carry you through. It's not just a Sunday morning. You are the church. Some Sunday morning is a temporarily escape from reality. This woman made Jesus a reality in her life. She said, if I could only touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Mark 5 and 28. Just one touch. I don't care what kind of turmoil you're facing in your life. All you need is one touch. In some mystical way, God is more than able to work it out for your good. Sometimes he don't take away the pain, but one touch just one gives touch. you the veracity to bear the pain. I'm told that all that live godly shall suffer. Come on now. You got to be in touch and in tune with the master. 
because we're living in a day and age now. If you don't have no strong spiritual legs to stand on, no strong spiritual legs, you're frail, you're fragile, and Satan will steal you in a minute. You got to have that one touch. And it's that one touch that leads to wholeness. Faith leads to wholeness. We're told and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. There are some things you know no one but God has done. I'm going to tell you, she felt it immediately. The Bible says she felt it. There are some situations that you've been in, you and I. Yes. Some circumstances, some stuff that we've dealt with, yes. some family stuff, some Come environmental on. stuff. Our, when we were kids on up, That's right. and you know it was nothing but God. Somewhere along the line, down through time, God showed it to you clearly. You could have been consumed. God healed you. God opened up the door for peace. God moved things in your life. That was God, the Bible says, and she felt it. See, when God do something for you, you're going to feel it. You're going to know it. You're going to know it was God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nobody else could have done that but God Almighty. Yes, he gets the glory. Yes. You know, I'm not, I, I, you know, I was hoping for Philadelphia last week. Oh, Lord, you know, but I, said, but I said that, that other young man, he pulled some tricks out of his hat because he always do. And, and the first thing he did when he pointed up. Give God his glory and honor for what he's done for you in your life. That had nothing to do with you. I know some of us think we went to school, we worked hard, we did this and we did that. And I'm, No, that was God's goodness working in your life and moving in your faculties and doing stuff for you. This woman went and testified immediately. She knew who it was who changed her life. Faith moved her, and the Lord honored it. Yeah. She knew she had been healed, and others, she had wanted to heal her, but could do nothing for her. Right. Nothing. Come on now. But she found Jesus. Uh -huh. She didn't use excuses. The crowd was pressing around him. Uh-huh. Nothing worked for her. Twelve years, it was not the right time to come to Jesus. She was Jairus. My, my. Right? Yeah. No, she didn't let that stop her. Watch this. In Matthew 9, 20 and 21, this is where you have to cross-reference all three accounts. Talk to us. Matthew says, and behold, well, a woman, and I'm finna close in a minute. A woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Put this in bold. For she said within herself, Oh. As a man thinketh, so is he. That's right. Come on now. She had already concluded that if all I could do is just. Uh -huh. You're talking about faith. Yeah. The power of faith. Yeah. Trusting God. Yeah. When it get thick. When you've been wrestling with this thing for a long time. Come on now. When you find no way out. When it's a struggle. When all odds is against you. When there's no one to turn to. When your best friend. Come on, preacher. When you're blocked. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anybody ever felt blocked? Come on now. Uh, 
faith. Man. Yes, yes. She said it within herself. Uh -huh. If I may touch his garment, I shall be whole. She used the word whole. Yeah. Put that word in bold. Uh -huh. Whole. The, is, the imagery of that is being delivered. Yeah. Rescued. Yeah. She broke her way through the masses with expectation. Talk, sir. God is a deliverer, y'all. Yes, he he'll bless us. He'll yes. help us. He'll yes. make us whole. Yes, sir. I'm talking about whole in spirit. Come on now. In the inner man. That's right. In spirit and in mind. There's an expected believing attitude. Note that the hopeless woman believed what? She heard, number one. And number two, she believed in what Jesus could do in this power on her life. That's why the Hebrew writer says, without faith it is impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe. That he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. James says, if you don't ask in, in faith, nothing wavering, don't ask. Come on now. Because you're like the wave of the sea, you sway. That's right. Whichever way the waves go, that's whichever way you go. Yes. God says, have faith. Yes. Believe in him, and not only in him, but in the power of his person and ability. Yes. Same expected. Yes. Believing attitude is essential for us today. Mm -hmm. When we come into Christ, whether hopeless or not, we must believe in him, believe in his power. Yes. Note the, imp the impact of this woman's faith. The healing cost Jesus. Mm -hmm. Spiritual virtue flowed out from him into the woman. Oh. The exponential of virtue took its toll, sapping his physical strength. Jesus felt virtue drain from his body. He turned and asked the crowd, who touched me? He used the word virtue. Power. Talk, sir. Power, church. Mm -hmm. Power. Faith is power. Come on. Faith moves God. Talk. Faith moves God when nothing else. When you're at end which, faith moves God. You know, I think I read the Ephesian letter in Ephesians 3 and 20, and Paul says, now unto him. Him. That is able. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, Above all that we ask and think. In other words, God can bless you more than what you even ask him for. That's right. He can do more That's right. than what you're requesting. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then Paul says, according. Yeah. According yeah. to the power that works Where in us, man. Yeah. Helping somebody today. You've been wrestling with something for a long time. You've been struggling with that thing. God says this power works in you. By way of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said. Virtue. Has gone out of me. He turned to the woman. There was no way Jesus could have felt the touch. To his robe. He was being pressed by a whole lot of folks in the crowd. My, my. But when she touched his robe, he knew it. Yeah. How her faith touched him. Mm -hmm. It's faith that touches Jesus. And faith do not go unnoticed. Talk, in God's kingdom. Talk. We walk by faith, not by sight. My, my. James says, Draw nigh yeah. unto God. And he'll draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. He used the word double-minded. He said, quit thinking all every which way. 
you paying attention to all of that stuff, God's word never changed. Scroll through the Bible like you're scrolling. I'm leave y'all alone now. I'm done. Jesus saw the woman. He saw a desperation. Her confession of hopelessness, her need, her faith, and his heart went out from her to the depths of her to the depths of compassion for her. Why? Because the Lord cared for all of us. No matter how re how cut off we feel, no matter how low we are, rejected, cut off, or ostracized. We may be considered unclean, dirty, polluted, contaminated, lost forever. But guess what? All you got to do is touch. Come on now. Somebody today have an issue with blood. Mm -hmm. That's right. My Lord tell me in 1 John 1 and 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood. Yeah. Jesus Christ, his son, cleanse us from all sin. Yes. Symbolically, her disease is a clear picture of what sin does. It, it cuts us off from God. But he extends his arm of grace and fellowship by faith. When you read through the pages, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and read the gospel of Jesus Christ, God gives us an opportunity to hear what he has done. And faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And just like this woman, she believed. Yes, sir. If you believe mm -hmm. in Jesus Christ, his person and his power, then it's going to move you. Amen. You're not going to sit in your seat Talk, and walk out of here an unsaved person. My, my. Because you don't know what tomorrow brings. Yes. Hear, believe, repent, confess the sweet name of Jesus. Go down into the watery grave of baptism. There is where we incur the blood yes. washed yes. in the blood. Mm -hmm. Washed in the blood. Yes, sir. God is extending the invitation on, right now today. Come on now. Somebody got an issue with blood. Yes. They need to be clean then you might not have an issue with blood, but your issue is with faith. Come on, preacher. Faith, trusting God, yes. believing God. Don't walk out of here without grabbing hold of. When the, when the excitement of Sunday is over with, right? And you have to go back out there and you have to face the reality of where you work, the reality of your family, your domestic issues, that table that you left at home with them bills on there is still there. That's right. And if you got a pain in your back, in your right hip, your elbow, your leg or something, and guess what? You going out there to get your Tylenol or whatever you need to take. That's right. And by faith, thank God. Trust God and keep it moving. Don't let the devil stop you. Don't get caught up by the noise because the noise will keep you from getting your blessing. Let go of the noise of what folk. It's all over, you know. Sometimes you got to break out of the noise, man. I told him Wednesday how to do it. What I, what I say, Elmer? Sometimes you got to just do folk like, wait a minute, let me go take care of this. I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> so they start talking and it's negative and it's not. You got to cut it right out of I'm going to get my blessing. That's right. I'm going to go on over here in this office. I'm going to do my job because at the end of the week, I'm going to get my blessing. So I don't want to hear that. If you got a problem, you go tell them about your stuff yourself. Amen, somebody. Don't let nobody stop you from getting your blessing, your graces. Amen. God is a healer. Amen. He's a healer, and he not only healed, but he'll make you whole. Amen. And when he make you whole, you do like this woman. You go tell somebody else, he did it for me, yes. and he'll do it for you.
by faith. If you're not a child of God, come on up. You've heard the invitation. If you struggle, you've wrestled with life, and you just need prayer, you need strength, he'll give it to you. Be a victor, not a victim. We're victors. We're not victims. We're not going to be a victim of the adversary. We won. The victory is ours as we stand and sing the hymn of invitation. Holy Spirit, dwell in me. Touch mine eyes that I might see. Oh, your goodness, grace, and power. Stay beside me every hour. Be my drink, be my living bread. Keep me safe, up, keep me fed. Oh, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, dwell in me. Well, now, Holy Spirit, comfort me. Well, let my heart be one with thee. When I am worried, soothe my mind. Well, let me sweet contentment find. May I run this wicked race filled by your amazing grace. Oh, holy, holy spirit to comfort me. Well, now, holy spirit, rescue me. Will set my soul completely free. Be side Jordan, make well in God's bosom. Lay my head, let me live in a brand new place. And see my blessed Savior's face. Oh, holy, holy, rescue me. We truly have been blessed this morning. I was thinking Brother Bracken wasn't going to get down from up there. Uh, he, he had a lot to say. And the word and the spirit was moving. We're just thankful to God with uh, the message that he delivered today. And that's one of those the world needs to hear it. Because there's so much going on outside. And the world definitely needs the Lord. Uh, we have several responses, so we'll go ahead and take care of these and move along. First, um, we have Edwina Minister. Is that what I'm saying? Oh, sorry. Our ministry. Uh, and she's uh, coming from Metro, right? Metro Central. And she wants to place her membership with her. With us, that is. So we're thankful to God for that. So we will get straight with her as far as things to follow up with. But she wanted prayer? Oh, okay. Okay, so we'll cover her in the prayer requests. And we have quite a few, and we're going to cover these at this time. Uh, so the next prayer request is from Brother Jimmy Dixon, one requesting prayer for his health and for the health of his family. Uh, as well as prayer for the Metcalf family had death, uh, and that's uh, a cousin of his. Uh, Sister Bracken is requesting prayer for Carlos Walker, Dolores Arnold, Wanda Arnold, and Rose regarding their health, 
and also pray for the family. That would include Amir Jr., Paris, London, uh, Amir Sr., and asking for the prayers for the Arnold Champion family and North Broadway. Todd Merriweather, which were thankful last week he was in the hospital. And God has blessed him to be back with us. First, he says, I have a testimony that God is good. And just about everybody in here should be able to say that God is good. And we're thankful that God has blessed him to be back. Requesting prayer for his health. Requesting prayer for the health of Bracky Merriweather, his uncle. And then also pray for me and the family to stay strong in the Lord. Sister Rita Ingersoll is requesting prayer for her health, also for uh, the health of Brianna Robinson and James Jones III, and pray for her and her family, uh, and my son Justin and his family. Uh, and then we have another testimony, Shalonda Lucas, Sister Shalonda Lucas. Uh, I had outpatient surgery last Sunday to remove a, t a tumor from my back. All tests and blood, re blood return cancer-free. That's a blessing. So she's still requesting prayer for her health and for the health of her mother. Um, and as well as she mentioned, Brother Todd Merriweather, and for strength while dealing with difficult challenges. Uh, Sister Veronica Robinson requested prayer for the help of her daughter, which is Brianna, which we already just mentioned, and also uh, requesting prayer regarding favorable test results for Sherry Hansbury. So keep all of them in your prayers. And we have several who are not with us because they're not feeling as well. Um, One requesting prayer for John Wright, who's not home, excuse me, who's not with us today. He's home uh, down with a cold, so keep him in prayer. Also, uh, Sister Sims, who's not with us today. Uh, Sister Corrine Thomas and Sister Mozella McCurry, keep them all in your prayers. Uh, then also uh, requesting prayer for Sister Stovall regarding her health as well as her sister and her great niece. And also continue to pray for Brother Bunton, who is home from the hospital, still got a ways to go. And no, he was in pain, but still continue to pray for him. Also Elder Willie Harrington, uh, who did see the doctor and still has some more things to do there, but keep him in prayer regarding his health also. One more here. Nope. Um, and then we just want to uh, also keep in mind and pray for all those who are traveling. Um, the flags are not with us because they're at Oakland today. Elder Patterson, who went to check on his mother, so keep him in prayer as well as his mother. Um, and also Sister Clark and her sister who are also traveling. So we ask that you keep them in your prayers. And then, not that they're last, but um, several are affected by the shooting uh, at Michigan State. It's a lot of young people. But if you listen to this, you have to realize the impact of that. Those doctors, those nurses in the hospital that have to deal with that. The EMTs. You got instructors who really don't even want to go back to campus. One person can do a lot of damage. But we need to pray for them, for everyone that's affected. And then when you can think about the young person, all of them, who had to stay hidden for so many hours, and you also think about a young person who was at Oxford, a young person 
who was at Sandy Hook. So when they were a child, they had to deal with it. And now they are basically an adult, and they still see the same thing. I know Dr. Bracken sees a lot, but if you look at it, one of the things we need, we need a lot of psychologists, psychiatrists, psychologists, I'm just saying, to deal with all the issues we got in this nation. The fact that we walked in here today says we are blessed. And that message is a powerful message. So at this time, we're in a position where we can pray for one another. So we're going to offer a word of prayer so we can continue on with the service and then realize how blessed we are to be here today. Shall we pray and give thanks? Our Heavenly Father, as we come, we're just so grateful and thankful for your love, mercy, and grace. We come asking you for forgiveness for those that request it as well as for each and every soul that's in this building. We have so much to be grateful and thankful for, but we also realize we're not worthy of everything you blessed us with. We pray at this time for all those that made requests regarding health, whether it be for themselves or loved ones. And as Dr. Bracken taught in that message, realizing it could be a short time or a long time, but if we put our faith in thee and get closer to thee, that you will take care of us, whichever way things go. We pray for those who are dealing with challenges in their lives. We thank thee for those who had testimonies. It's just another example to show how blessed we are. We pray for those who are traveling. We ask that you be with all of them and bless them with traveling grace and bless them to come back and find everything in proper condition. We pray for those who are dealing with challenges in their life, whether it be job, could just be with other family members that you just bless each and every one of us to realize that no matter what the situation is, you're still there with us. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We ask that you bless them and bless the everyone as far as in this nation that are impacted by so many different types of shootings. Uh, whether it be them personally, whether it be a loved one, a friend, but we also think about those who've lost their lives, but we also know we got some who haven't lost their life, but their life is permanently changed. We pray for those individuals who are still in the hospital, and we know you have the final say, but they seem to be just hanging on. And we ask for your grace and mercy upon them and their families as well. We ask that you just be with us, Again, we want to say thank you for just blessing us to even be able to get out of our beds and come here to hear your word, to sing these songs, to be able to offer praise and ask forgiveness for you on the Lord's Day. We ask these blessings and we give these thanks in our son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This time have been set aside for giving. Our giving must be done bountifully and cheerfully as well. For God loves a cheerful giver. Shall we pray for the offering at this time? Most kind and righteous Father in heaven, we're so thankful for your love, grace, and mercy that you shower upon us. We thank you right now, Heavenly Father, that, that we give the Father thy cause here in the kingdom in which we live. In Jesus' name we pray and we do give thanks. Let us all say amen. amen. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine will he. Healing of oh, the everlasting arms. Well, now what a blessing.
sadness what a peace is mine will leaning on the everlasting arms where we're leaning on Jesus we're leaning on Jesus we're safe and secure from all alarms where we're leaning on Jesus we're leaning on Jesus we're leaning Meaning well now on the everlasting arms. Well now, oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way we're leaning. Well now on the everlasting arms. Well now, oh, how bright the path grows from day to day. Well, it well now, let staying up. Yes, church, we are leaning on Jesus. We're leaning. On Jesus we're safe and secure All arms were whipped On Jesus we're leaning On Jesus we're leaning Well now Everlasting arms. So we prepare our hearts and minds for the privilege to commune with our Lord. Sing a few verses of He Loved Me So, and our brethren will be coming shortly. Why did my Savior come to earth and to He loved me so. 
as Christians, we are taught that one is supposed to partake of the Lord's Supper every first day of the week. The Lord's Supper is to be observed as a sweet memorial of the greatest, vi the greatest sacrifice ever given to mankind. We have to remember that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and through his suffering and death, we might have a right to the tree of life and have it more abundantly. In 1 Corinthians chapters 11 through 24, Jesus, 24 through 25, Jesus said, This bread is my body. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye in remembrance of me. We are to examine ourselves to see if we are worthy to partake. If so, we may eat and drink. If not, those who eat and drink unworthily do so to their own condemnation. This is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 29. Let us now give thanks for the body and blood of the Lamb. Our God and our Father in heaven, we pray at this time, giving thanks for this opportunity to commune with you, dear Father, according to your will and your way. We ask you, dear Father, bless the cup, the bread, and the cup, dear Father, accordingly. It's in Jesus' name we pray, give thanks, and ask these blessings. Let us all say amen. amen. Communion has been served. Amen. Again, we want to thank our brethren for the devotional aspect of our services. The brethren always do a great job. I'd just like to piggyback on uh, something Elder Crawley uh, just stated while he was up here as it relates to the gun violence and the shooting. You know, one person, he said, can do a lot of damage. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, you know, it's created a climate of fear within our society. And I have experienced a lockdown of similar. I don't know if you recall last year the security guard that got killed at the mental health clinic. That's where I work at. And that we were up there with kids as well. Uh, and after that, many employees quit. Mental health workers, psychiatrists, psychologists, doctors never came back because of that. My point is, we should not live in fear, but we need to be watchful. Amen. Paul would say, walk circumspectly, right. right, redeeming the time. You know, we just have to be aware, be alert of what's going on around us. Fear is of the devil. Fear is of the devil. I will not be afraid to get in my car and go to the store to come worship, to go to work. I will not allow fear control me. But I am going to be watchful. If I see something that looks funny, I'm going to highlight it, right? And so we just want to be watchful of everything that's going on around us. Let's not just be out and be around just in space in our own world, you know. Let's understand what's going on. Keep those families. Uh, uh, those situations are traumatic. They are traumatic. I still haven't walked through that hallway. And I used to walk through that hallway every day going to my car, right, where that young man got killed where I work. You know, it's just me. You might say it's superstitious or whatever, but I don't have to go that way. I can go another way now, right? <laughs> You know, um, but it's not about fear for me. And so uh, we just want to be mindful. I want to uh, remind, uh, first of all, we want to thank our visitors. You are honored guests. We thank you. If you're sharing with us for the first time through our live stream or you're here, we thank God you came to worship with us. And we're praying that this has been a good experience for you. And if there are any questions about anything, please come see myself or the leadership. We'll be glad to share with you. Uh, we just want to invite everyone back uh, for Wednesday Bible class. Continue to pray for us. We will be, uh, as the leadership, 
uh, make decisions as fading in Sunday morning, Bible class attendance, and um, <clears throat> maybe perhaps Sunday evening worship service. We just want to pray that we can have a smooth transition and have your support behind it at the same time. Thank God. Y'all all right? Oh, yes. God is good. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for blessing us on this day. We thank you for your word, uh, which is designed to enrich our souls and spirits, dear God. And we're praying that as we leave here today, we will leave here having uh, been in touch and in tune with you as we go out and face a troubled, dark, cold world that cares for none of us, dear God, or our belief in you, but we trust in your covering, we trust in your blessings, uh, we trust in your light upon our lives. Help us to be lights, help us to be the blessing that can redirect dark souls that seek to do evil in a world, that seek to serve the devil. Uh, help us be that light that can uh, help them find a better way to deal with their uh, challenges and issues as well as help us to better deal with ours. Again, we thank you for this opportunity to come out and worship you in spirit and in truth. It is all about you, dear God. And it is our prayer that this worship service have been pleasing and acceptable in thy sight, dear God, uh, that you may get the glory and all of the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we're praying and asking all things. Amen. Amen. Amen.